Mr. President, thank you so much for joining CNBC. I want to kick off by asking you, Iran's Guardian Council, that I understand is led by the Supreme Leader, Ali Khamenei, has essentially barred you from competing in the election on Friday. When you think about this, you were president of Iran for two consecutive terms. Is that fair? In the name of God, let me start by saying hello to you, to your colleagues, and to all your viewers. I do hope that this conversation and interview is useful for your audience. As you may be aware, I decided to participate in the upcoming presidential elections based on the demands of millions of Iranians across the country. I made it clear on the day that I announced my candidacy that I will not participate in the elections if the will of millions millions of people is denied for no legitimate reason, like it has been in the past. I consider the exclusion of citizen demands from these sorts of decisions not only against their rights, but also against our own constitution. So are you saying, sir, just so that I get this right, that the Supreme Leader and the Guardian Council have rigged this election? We already know who's going to be the next president. I've announced this before, that any decision that prevents the people from influencing the outcome is against the spirit of the revolution and the constitution, meaning that any action that would exclude people from the process of making decisions and influencing outcomes. So this has been rigged? My response was clear. So when you have said in the past that the establishment needs to be changed, were you referring then to the religious establishment? because it seems as if they're the ones calling the shots. As I've mentioned before, the entire world requires fundamental changes and Iran is part of that world. I want to ask you about that a little bit more broadly, because Iran, as we all know, had the worst response to the COVID-19 pandemic of any country in the entire region. Over 61,000 people lost their lives. The economy, of course, was already in a state of contraction as a result of U.S. sanctions in the previous years. Um, if the religious establishment, the Supreme Leader, makes all of the decisions, do you believe that they are still qualified, and he is still qualified, um, to act for the people, given how badly the government as a whole responded to the crisis? The coronavirus pandemic highlights once again that the world needs to make fundamental and structural changes to their systems of governance. The pandemic proved that the world needs to be managed in a collaborative and harmonious manner if we want to prevent further damage. Iranian people believe that the response to the COVID pandemic in the country was a failure. I must say that the frontline workers and the medical professionals worked tirelessly, but the overall management has been ineffective and unwise. Iran is extremely strong in terms of medical knowledge and medical experts, and unfortunately, the government was not able to use this potential in an optimal manner. So the current government is to blame for the COVID-19 response? That's true. Sir, we've been told that the Revolutionary Guard has for many years now been funneling money to foreign policy objectives across the region, whether it be to the Houthis in Yemen, to Hezbollah in Lebanon, or elsewhere. Um, when you think about that a bit more broadly, given the scope of the problems facing your country today, COVID-19, an economic crisis, do you believe that the Revolutionary Guard is part of the problem? Uh, yeah. Do you believe that the cause of the U.S. imposing such unjust sanctions that have crippled the Iranian economy has something to do with the Revolutionary Guards? Or do you believe that sanctions have no effect on the economy? I believe that all of us, the U.S., Iran and other countries involved, need to reconsider and re-evaluate our political strategies. The foundation that the current relationships are based upon is not ideal and will not allow for problems and issues to be solved. I think that everyone involved should re-evaluate. What about the establishment itself? You were president, obviously, for eight years in Iran. You understand the thinking of both, I assume, the clerical establishment, the religious establishment, but also the political establishment as well. Do you believe that the establishment wants to get a deal with President Biden on the nuclear file? 
To reiterate, the people will not accept any agreement or deal that has not taken into consideration their rights as citizens. This being said, I don't think a deal will necessarily solve the problems between the two countries, and I believe that Iran US disputes should be addressed in another forum. The previous dialogues and agreements couldn't solve the problem and even managed to make them worse. Do you believe that Iran can get a deal with President Biden today? This depends on U.S. policy and the degree to which the president can influence these policies. If we base things in accordance with justice and mutual respect, then I believe that problems can be solved. In addition, it is important that the two don't interfere in each other's strategies and dealings. I believe that the two countries will need to change their perspectives and look at each other differently. The U.S. government should not be seeking to control Iran or the Middle East. In addition, Iran should recognize the legitimacy of the U.S. government. I believe that the two sides should open the doors to collaboration amongst their people. Today, the governments have closed the possibility of cooperation amongst two nations due to mutual disagreements. Governments are responsible for tending to the needs of their people and unfortunately, these two countries have currently severed ties and don't have a relationship. The first step would be to allow citizens from both sides to travel freely and engage in cultural and commercial activities. Sir, by that logic, then, it would make sense, would it not, um, for the leadership in Iran to make a deal here? Because the Iranian people have been suffering for years now. Their economy uh, has contracted by over 12 percent over the last couple of years, and the global pandemic has hit Iran very, very hard. So would it be irresponsible then, in your view, for Iran not to reach an agreement with the United States? My understanding from your point is that you are under the impression that U.S. pressure will result in the leadership bending to the will of the people and retreating. Did I understand this correctly? In your view, Mr. President, then, the United States is wrong for, quote, uh, interfering in the affairs of others. Many would say that Iran, when it comes to interfering with the affairs of others, the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon, um, many would say that was also wrong and against international law. When you think about this a bit more broadly, um, you've said no one has the right to intervene in the affairs of others. And you were talking about the Syrian conflict. But Hezbollah, which is a proxy of Iran, is very much intervening in the affairs of Lebanon, is it not? What's that relationship? As I mentioned before, both Iran, the US and many other countries will need to change their wider policies. I am in principle against meddling in affairs of other nations and that is why I said that if the US changes its policies, then the situation will improve. And I have announced that both Iran and the US will need to change their diplomatic policies. Other countries should adjust their policies too, since after all, the status quo has not been able to improve regional or global conditions. So you believe Iran should stop interfering in the affairs of Lebanon? In general, no country, including Iran, US or Europe, has the right to interfere in another nation's business. What about the idea of a rapprochement with Israel? Because to make a just and lasting peace with the United States, that has to be part of the dialogue. We've seen the UAE and Bahrain sign on to Abraham Accords. Is there any situation in which Iran could make a peace with Israel? For 70 years now, U.S. presidents have collectively agreed on diplomacy towards the Middle East. The question is that has this strategy been able to solve the conflicts in the Middle East? What I mean is that Mr. Biden says the same thing about the Zionist regime as what was said 70 years ago. The Palestine conflict is not related to the issue between Iran and the Zionist regime. The problem in Palestine will need to be resolved by its own merit. We should not divert attention from the real subject. A nation called Palestine has been occupied and its right to settlement and ownership has been taken away, resulting in millions of people being stranded. What does this issue have to do with the UAE or Bahrain? They have no involvement in this topic. The United Nations has issued several resolutions in support of the people of Palestine. The problem will not be fixed with war or by relationships between other countries and the Zionist regime.
The issue is fixing the problem in Palestinian land and territories. Our suggestion has been that a referendum takes place so that the people that are in Palestine have a chance to create their own future. Changing the stance or the topic will not really solve the core issue. Our expectation is that Mr. Biden uses this opportunity as president of the U.S. to unfreeze 70-year-old policies towards the Middle East and approach these nations with justice and respect while taking into account their rights. Israel's just elected a new prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is gone after over a decade as uh, leader of that country. Do you believe that there is a scenario where Iran could work with Natalie Bennett, could find some resolution, some kind of peace? <laughs> I explained what the solution would be, and that is recognizing the rights and sovereignty of the Palestinian people. We can count on a solution that takes into account the rights of the Palestinian people, otherwise if things remain the same, then there will be no change in the situation in the Middle East. This is what I have gathered from the 70-year experience. What do you consider today to be the greatest threat to Iran's stability? Are we talking about policies of the United States? Are we talking about the nuclear file, a threat from the region, Israel? What is the greatest threat to Iran today? I think that the biggest threat for any country is to lose the trust and satisfaction of its people. And do you believe that's happening in Iran today? Do the people distrust the government? I believe that this is a global problem, and evidence of it can be seen in Iran too. Sir, I want to bring it back to the conversation about U.S power in the region. When you were president, the Iraq war was raging. American troops and NATO troops were in Afghanistan as well. Do you believe the United States still exerts the same level of power in this part of the world? When tens of billions of dollars of arms is sold to countries within the region annually, this causes major problems. This threatens the security of the region and is considered as meddling. Are you talking about arms sales to Saudi Arabia and the UAE in particular? It doesn't make a difference. Even if they sell to Iran, the outcome will be the same. But what about, for example, Iran's support of Hezbollah? They send weapons to Hezbollah, doesn't that have the same effect, causing more problems? I've explained this before. No country, whether Iran, US, Europe, Saudi Arabia, Turkey or Russia, has the right to interfere in each other's affairs. The problem is that countries use the subject of interference by other countries as an excuse to interfere themselves. This is what I said needs to change in the world. The series and strategies used around the globe have failed and need to go through fundamental changes. We all need to be friends and manage the world together based on mutual respect and justice. In this scenario, there will be no need for the production and sale of arms. So just to clarify, if a nuclear deal is reached with the United States, Will Iran, in your view, stop meddling in Lebanon and elsewhere? I believe that the deal between the U.S. and Iran should not be against the interests of any other nation. In fact, it should move towards global peace and security. I believe that the conflict between Iran and the U.S. doesn't have any advantages for either country as well as other countries in the region. I want to ask you about that finally, sir, in terms of those regional states, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, your neighbors in the Gulf Arab countries. Do you believe that the problems between Iran and the Gulf Arab countries are over? I hope that they do end. There is no rational reason behind these disagreements. The U.S. government should not encourage or invest in regional conflicts in the Middle East. Above all, they should refrain from meddling in our region. Well, they've spent trillions of dollars to meddle, if you want to call it that, in this part of the world. Um, with the presence of the Fifth Fleet, for example, in Bahrain. But finally, sir, I just want to ask, during your time as president of Iran, you were known to be very fiery in your rhetoric. You didn't hold back. That's a description that some would make of former U.S. President Donald Trump. Do you believe that the world is safer now that Joe Biden is president? Uh, 
If you were an Iranian and Mr. Bush threatened you with military attacks daily, what would you do? At the same time, I requested that a direct flight take place between New York and Tehran so that the people of the two countries could connect with one another. I also requested an audience with Mr. Obama at the UN General Assembly. And also, we reached an agreement on the nuclear issue, but the conservatives in Iran and in the US didn't allow for any progress to be made. But they said no, sir, because you were being untransparent in your nuclear program. That's why they said no. The responsibility of this lies on the IAEA, the UN, the nuclear watchdog. At the time, we had an agreement with Mr. Obama, but the hardliners on both sides didn't allow things to come to a conclusion. And Iranian militias were killing American soldiers in Iraq. That's why they said no. I don't think you are in a position to provide reasons for the way the U.S. governments behaved. However, U.S. soldiers were present around Iran borders and there were problems, and these problems need to be fixed from the root. Today we are speaking so that those problems don't repeat. Do you believe the world is safer without Donald Trump in the White House? That is, I believe, a domestic U.S. issue and should be judged by its own people. But we are waiting to see around the world if U.S. policies will actually change in practice. We are hoping that this change does occur. Mr. President, thank you for joining CNBC.